Since their beginnings in the 70s, the process of building Earth ships continues to evolve and improve. But everything still revolves around rubber. What we start with is about 500 automobile tires uh, that we get from the dump or tire stores, and uh, we pound them full of uh, site dirt. That creates a mass retaining wall that we can berm against and creates a massive wall that can hold heat. You end up with, like, say, a anywhere between 150 and 300 pound rammed earth brick encased in rubber and steel belting. And we basically stack those like bricks, pound them in place. And then the second stage is to do uh, all the steel work and, and the foundation work, and we form a lot of that with can walls made out of aluminum cans that we get from the recycling center. Uh, we also use plastic bottles, and we've used all sorts of different waste in different projects. The bottles and cans are used for forming concrete and for non-bearing interior walls that are lightweight and curvable. Glass windows are key ingredients since it's sunny 75 to 80 percent of the time in New Mexico. And the Earth ships are all built facing south to capture all that potential solar energy. The newer models like this one have uh, a greenhouse built into the house. Um, but separate from the house. So your plants get lots of light and lots of warmth, but the house doesn't get as warm as the greenhouse does. Building them is labor intensive, but they're all designed to meet local building codes. Technology's gotten so much better. Panels are more efficient, the batteries are more efficient, and as everything moves forward, so do we with the buildings. And what we were doing three years ago is seriously obsolete compared to what we're doing now. What we're doing is, see, we, we start to understand these Earth phenomena more and more and more and more and squeezing more performance out of them to the point where, I mean, I'm getting pretty cocky. I'm saying, hell, I could do this on the moon and it would work. The Earth ships cost about $200 per square foot, which seems steep, but not when you consider that your utility bills can be as low as $50 a year. They really start to look at materials differently. Uh, like I consider a tire a building material just like a, a two by four. So um, yeah, it gives you it gives you a different way of looking at you know what could you use that that is a byproduct in your house in a house that'll keep you warm and give you power and water and food. He looks like a mad scientist. Michael Reynolds is kind of like a uh, renegade, redneck architect who, uh, for some reason, has a uh, pretty brilliant idea. He's the man behind the plan, the father of the Earth ships. I would describe him as being quite a visionary, but at the same time, you know, the bottom line is direct action. Um, just getting things done and doing it. He's been called the garbage warrior. The fact that we use what this world calls garbage, uh, you know, a lot of things uh, have been a stigma against it, but it just keeps getting better. In other words, the, the, the climate change paranoia, the energy crunches, the economic crunches, everything gets people more and more afraid and this is something they can look at and say, I can, I can take care of my family if I have one of these. One of these buildings in this community would simply take care of you no matter what happened. Uh, you could stay alive. In this building here, you could literally stay alive. So he's always on the go. It's, 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 he's nonstop. You know? There's always something in his head. He's always, what's the next building? Or what's the next move to make it easier or more accessible? He's a trained architect who came to Taos to avoid the draft during the Vietnam War. He calls himself a biotech now, and after 40 years of building Earth ships, who's to argue? I'm getting pretty good at doing it, and what has happened is the world has gone down, down, down to the point where it really, really needs this. I just happen to be here with this, and so, yeah, not right now I'm, I'm on a magic carpet ride. He's his own man. He's got a vision and a real commitment. This is not just about being an architect, it's about helping people. And I see people as stressed and starved right now all over the planet, even the wealthy people. Uh, they're, they're stressed and starved in certain ways. And 
And if you could take the people to this planet and make them relaxed and totally comfortable with knowing that they had sustenance for them and their families, they would probably emerge to a completely different level of humanity, which would be beyond politics, beyond economics, it would be unbelievable. People are not trusting anything these days, except maybe the sun, you know. The sun can't be bought out. The sun can't be corrupted. Uh, the rain can't be corrupted. This is a way that people are starting to see it's the truth. It's the only truth. After all these years, Reynolds still has fun with the designs. Hence their off-the-wall appearances. They can look like whatever you want. But I am aware of the fact that people do want things to look a certain way, and so they can look pretty much as conventional as you want them to. He was absolutely, uh, you know, dogged in doing what he was going to do out here and doing whatever he had to do to make it work. And I'm so thankful for that. And look, you know, I'm living like this because he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Well, I'm a pioneer. I'm a visionary. I'm, uh, you know, I'm all of that. But uh, I'm a human. And we're all humans. And I sort of am excited about where humanity can go, and it's kind of just an adventure. Coming up on Cantori Stories, a low-cost solution to natural disasters? We used 10,000 plastic bottles off the streets of uh, Port-au-Prince. Uh, we used about close to 100 tires. You take the two and you create a wall that can withstand uh, an earthquake. 